So there's a number of different techniques you might have learned. I would like you to divide 2,748 divided by 13. How many people learned this technique? And this looks familiar. Yes? See if you can do it. Um, sometimes people learn a technique where they do like this. And do stop. You do, that. Your, do that technique. Nope. How would you divide that by 13? Uh, so I would take the 27. So do it. So what's your technique? Uh, can I can I go is, up to the front? Is the same thing? Can I no, go? no, no. Okay. Is it the same thing? Well, there are techniques to get an answer. If the answer is the same and it's right, then they're not the same thing, but they're similar things. Yeah. Okay. So first, I will go over the classic long division technique here, which is set up like this. Okay, so we have our 13 or 2,748. And in the classic method, you would take your 13 and you would start from the left and say, are there any 13s in 2? Thank you. So in the classic technique, you would start from the left of your big number and say, are there any 13s in 2? No. Are there any 13s in 27? Yes. How many 13s in 27? 2. And you were supposed to put the 2 above the 7, and then you would multiply 2 times 13 and get 26. Now, what really is happening here, and the reason it was important to put the 2 above the 7, is that really represents 200. And so sometimes what other techniques were is sometimes you'd get a technique where you'd say, I can get 213. And 200 times 13 is 2,600. That would leave me with 148. So this is another style. The second style is nicer for understanding because the first style with the 2 just there, most kids didn't know that that represented 200. And that when that represented 200, you never wrote these extra zeros, but you could have. And then you subtracted, and you were left with 148, the same as you were left with 148 there. Okay. The nice thing about the technique on the right is sometimes students wouldn't know 200, and they would just start with 100 and get, take off 1,300, and then say, oh, I can take another 100 off and take 13. So it didn't matter how, that you got the exact right number to begin with. It would all add up in the end. Okay? Right, you could, you could take one 13 off at a time and just add up all your ones until you got to 211. That would work as well. Not recommend. Okay. Next up, you would have your 148. And you would go, can I get any 13 in the 1? No. But now, as I go from the left, I get to the 14. And I say, yes, there's one 13 in 14. So I would put a 1 over the 10s column. That 1 represents 10. And when I take 10 and multiply it by 13, I would get 130. But usually in this technique, you just wrote 13. You could write the extra 0 as well, which is not bad for understanding and subtract and get 18. Same thing here. Someone might have said, I'm going to take 10 more, 10 more off and keep going. And then when you got to the 18, it was like, oh, there's one 13 and 18. And you're left with the remainder of five. Same thing here. You take off one more. Add these up, 211, and there's still five left. That 
5 still needs to be divided by 13. Okay, so this is long division. Now, there's been sometimes a push away from the technique on the left here. However, we're going to really need that technique when we get to algebra. So if knowing this sort of style that we did here on the left is going to be important. So I'm going to do this next one in that style again, just so you can, I don't know if you want to just watch it or if you actually want to do it as well. 4,212 divided by 27. So moving from left to right, I would get to the 42 and say I can get 1 in there. 1 times 27 is 27. And I subtract, and this leaves me with 15, and still, like, technically, there's that's 100, so that would be 2,700. It leaves me with 1,512. We'll switch colors, because now this is my new number, and I have to go to 151 before I can get any 27s, because there's no 27s in 1, there's no 27s in 15, but if I get to 151, there is. And... We check 27 times 5 is 135, 27 times 6 is 162, too much. So I'm going to put a 5 above the 1. 5 times 27 is 135. Draw your line. Again, you're going to subtract, and you're going to be left with 160. This is technically a 0 there. 162. Just that is handy, so I don't have to redo my mental math. I checked already that 6 works. 6 times 27 is 162. And we get a remainder of 0. So this one factored or divided perfectly. Okay? What we're basically saying as an answer here is we're basically saying that 2,748 is equal to 13 times 211 uh-oh, we're not quite right. We had a remainder of 5. You would have to add 5 to make it work. But the second one, 4,212, is exactly 27 times 156. Is it? Is that right? 156. With that one works out perfectly. Okay? We could also, like... Long division is division. We could also write this like this, that 2,748 divided by 13 is equal to 211, but then you still had 5 left over that still needed to be divided by 13. So if you know your 13 decimal places, then you could be set. Let's just add 0. Oh, yeah, and, and some of you might have learned to do this, right? And you could keep going and get your decimal places with long division and go on forever until things repeated and then you draw a line over top. I, think, I don't know if they did that. I remember doing that. Going on, like, and then if you found out that all of a sudden things started to repeat themselves, you could draw a line over those line numbers and you would just be able to stop. But it's kind of nice that we could just go 211 plus 513. So what does this look like? For algebra, we're going to start with this one. We're going to take 3x squared. I'm going to write 3x squared minus 4x plus 5, and I'm going to divide it by x minus 2. And I'm going to color code it just like I color code the second one here. Notice how I went from the left and I underlined the 42 in green, and that's when I figured out and then my next number, I underlined it in purple, and I figured it out. And then underlined in orange and figured it out. Same thing's going to happen here. I'm going to start with green. 3x squared. Is there anything you could multiply x minus 2 by to get a 3x squared? Yes. If you multiplied by a 3x, and that multiplied by this x, can you see that you would get a 3x squared? That's 3x times x. So what I'm going to do is above the x column, I'm going to write 3x. Because when I multiply 3x by x minus 2, 
I'm going to get a 3x squared, and 3x times the minus 2 is going to give me minus 6x. Now in long division, what did you do when you got that number? You subtract it. In algebra, we're going to do the same thing, but we have to be careful because we have to subtract all of this. So I'm going to put it in brackets, because when I subtract all of this, this perfectly goes away to be 0. But the negative 4x minus the negative 6x is going to leave me with 2x. And 5 minus nothing is still going to leave me with 5. Step 1 is green. To review what we did in step 1, you started from the left, saw the 3x squared. You asked yourself, what would I have to multiply x by to get a 3x squared? I'd have to multiply by 3x. But when I multiply this whole thing by 3x, I'll get a 3x squared and I'll get a minus 6x. Next, I'll switch colors. What long division is, is it's an algorithm. It's something you do over and over and over again until you finish. So what did we do? We went from the left. There's my first term. It's a 2x. Is there something I could multiply x by to get 2x? Yes. I would multiply by a plus 2. That plus 2 times the x is 2x. That plus 2 times the negative 2 is minus 4. I put it in brackets and I subtract. 2x minus 2x goes away. But 5 minus the negative 4 is 9. Do I get a little bit of a question? So, once you put the purple number up here, okay, I'm going to draw this in blue. This gets multiplied by all of this. And that goes away. Does that make sense? Because 5 minus a negative, and I guarantee you, you will make mistakes with subtracting negative. Especially, I don't know why, but especially in the very last number, you're going to be so excited to be done, you'll make a mental math mistake. Yes? Uh, I didn't have another okay, I'll come see it. I'm just going to finish here. Now, that doesn't have an x in it anymore, so that is remainder 9, which will disappear in a second. Yes, we have that method as well. We're going to do that method too. So we, we'll use two kinds because this method doesn't work in some situations. Okay? All right, let's do the second one. Oh, and by the way, we could now say. For example, what did we figure out? We figured out that 3x squared minus 4x plus 5 is equal to x minus 2 times 3x plus 2. Well, that got us very close, but not perfectly. There was a remainder of 9. So if we just add 9, it works out. But if there was no remainder, you will have perfectly, right? If, the, if there was plus zero at the end, you would have just developed a new way of factoring. Do, 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 do. I don't quite get this one. Okay, watch this deck. This is going to be, I'm sorry, I'm going to get excited. Warning you already. Zach, you're all excited. I know. I should tone it down. Two X cubed. Should I try that? Should I try to teach a class where I pretend to be annoyed and bored and dumb? Like, huh? 2x cubed minus x squared minus 2x plus 3. We're going to divide by x plus 3. No, that would be weird. Okay. This is going to be good. I think I would so, drop the class. You would drop the class if it was like that all the time. I'm going to start with green because I started with green last time. I'm going to try to remember which colors I did in which order. Starting with green. Is there anything you could multiply the x by to get a 2x cubed? Yes. 2x uh, squared. So we write the 2x squared above the x squared column. And 2x squared times x, you bet, is 2x cubed. And 2x squared times the plus 1 is plus 2x squared. Put it in brackets. Subtract. This minus this works out. You know, 
Does it make sense that always the first one should go away completely? Negative minus 2 would give me negative 3x squared, and then we still have a minus 2x and a plus 1. Next color, purple. Now I, my first term is a negative 3x squared. Is there anything you need to multiply x by to get a negative 3x squared? Negative 3x. So I take that negative 3x times it by the x, get negative 3x squared. I take that negative 3x times by the plus 1, and I get negative 3x. Put it in brackets and subtract. This goes away. Negative minus minus is a plus x plus 1. Next color, I'm going to go to orange. Now it's an x. Is there anything I can multiply x by to get an x? A 1. 1 times x is x. x times 1 is plus 1. Put it in brackets and subtract, and everything goes away. And there's no remainder. So what we have done, oh my goodness, this is exciting. We have just figured out that 2x cubed minus x squared, 2x cubed minus x squared minus 2x plus 1 is equal to bracket x plus 1 times by, what was our answer? 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. And for the first time in your life, you have factored a cubic. But you haven't factored it completely. But now that you've factored that far, how hard would it be to do this? And we factored it completely. And so now if someone said, hey, what would make this equal to zero? You could easily say, oh, one negative one and one half. And you could solve more complicated questions. So what we're going to do in this unit is we're going to think about if we want to factor this, we could use long division, and if we end up with a remainder of zero, we factor it. But we're going to have to develop some strategies because, like, which one should you try first? What different things should you try to see if it works? So we can go to example one. We're going to start off by writing some long division set up rules. And these rules never came into place with regular numbers, but they come into place with algebra. Rule number one. You have to make sure you write the polynomial in the right order. This never happens with numbers. Right? But these, can you see, this is not in the same, like it goes from x cubed to the 5, to the x to the x squared. We're going to want to write it in descending order. So we're going to write the x cubed first, then the x squared, then the x, then the number at the end. And why doesn't this happen with regular numbers? Well, you're never allowed to just switch the order of regular numbers. That's 582. There we go. Is that 582? Yeah. Right? Maybe, maybe uh, this is my hundreds. Would this annoy the heck out of you? These are my tens and these are my ones. And then you'd be allowed to do that? Does that annoy you? That would be terribly annoying. People could all of a sudden just say, I'm going to just label it however I want. That's because when we write 582, we don't have to do this. That would be annoying, too, if you always had to write them separately. This is 580 and 2. You even say the and in between. Right? This is 582 as well. And maybe we should be able to say that. I have five hundred eighty-two dollars. I have eighty plus five hundred, no, eighty and five hundred and two dollars. That would be annoying as well in just speaking. 
if you could say it in any order that you wanted. But in algebra, sometimes that happens. So rule number one is we're going to have to make sure that we write it in descending order. And rule number two, we're going to have to add a zero if a term slash degree is missing. We don't often write zeros when we're writing algebra, but sometimes things are missing. So, in this example, only set up the rule number one applies. Set up our thing, we're going to have 2x cubed, we're going to write this in order, so we're going to write 3x squared next, then the minus 2x, finally the plus 5, we're dividing by x minus 1, starting with green, there's my 2x cubed. Is there anything I can multiply the x by to get the 2x cubed? 2x cubed. 2x squared. Sorry. Yep. And we would write that above the x squared column. So then I multiply 2x squared times x, 2x cubed. And 2x squared times minus 1, minus 2x squared. Put it in brackets and subtract. The brackets are important to make sure you remember and just subtract both of them. 2x squared, this would be 0. 3x squared minus a negative gives me positive 5x squared minus 2x squared. Next color. Perfect. Now my first term is a 5x squared. Is there anything I could multiply x by to get a 5x squared? Yes. Plus 5x. That 5x gets multiplied by the x. 5x squared. The 5x gets multiplied by the negative x. Negative 5x. Put it in brackets. And subtract. It'll be 0, negative minus this would be plus 3x plus 5. Next color is orange. Now I have a 3x. There's something I can multiply x by to get a 3x. What's this? 3. 3 times x? 3x. 3 times a minus 1? Minus 3. Put brackets around it and subtract. 5 minus negative 3, you get 8 as your remainder. Remainder 8. So what does this mean? This means that what we started with. Oh, I'm going to show you a little trick that I like to use. Because I'm lazy. Is I like to put the whole thing that I started with in brackets, and right above it go, let p of x equal all of that. Because then later, and we're going to do this a fair bit, we're going to say, instead of rewriting all of those, I can just now go, p of x equals, we figured out that it's going to be x minus 1 multiplied by 2x squared plus 5x plus 3, that's as close as we can get to making everything perfect, to equal what was in the inside. But then there's a remainder of 8, so we add 8 to make it work perfect. And this that we wrote right here is called the division statement. It's the polynomial is equal to the divisor, what you're dividing by, multiplied by your quotient, this part is your quotient. I think I should go to Gary Kuhn on the way here. I doubt he heard me. Somehow I just started to get a crazy. I don't know why. Plus, and this is your remainder. DQ plus R. Yes. Not going to Gary Kuhn? Just in the walk -in? And this is on the DQ plus R. That's on page four. You can turn to it on page four if you want to highlight it. P equals D. Q plus R 
That's called your division signal. So after you divide, you have a division signal. If your remainder is zero, then you factor it. And that's going to be very nice and very handy. So let's go. Oh, I end the video here.